You can always count on Bud Light, just like you can always count on Always Game Gary. No bar is too far. No wing sauce is too hot. Not for Gary. Always Game Gary is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light Beer, AB St. Louis, Missouri. This is the best of the Dan Lebator show with the Stugatz podcast. I'm trying to think, Stugatz, of what is the best apocalyptic movie. Like, my references are getting more and more dated. So when I go to Mad Max, uh, you know, I'm going into the 80s with a movie when I'm thinking of sort of uh, apocalypse. What was that movie uh uh, last year, excellent movie in the desert. Um, Fury the, Road? Yeah. yeah. Mad Fury Max Road. Fury yeah. Road? Yeah. For, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. So, so Mad I'm, Max isn't that dated but, no, anymore. No, 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 but I'm thinking about the other Mad Max. I'm thinking more along the lines of the Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson is a young young man, and what I wanted to ask you is, or, or like even when I talk about the game shows of an apocalyptic time, like the Running Man. Uh, you remember that? The, yeah, the, yes. The, that that whole movie where Richard Dawson is a game show host, and it's an apocalyptic time. Whatever the whatever these references are conjuring in your mind, I want you to think of on the televisions there a couple of games from yesterday are on the screen. In one of them, the quarterback is on the field, spasming, looking like he's having a seizure. Yeah. On one of the televisions in this apocalyptic time. And on the other television, it's just Jacksonville against Seattle. <laughs> All of it. Like it's and you're just watching and it's like just violent and scary. And and you know, in Jacksonville, for some reason, the the footage coming out of Jacksonville, have you noticed this? Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is television footage that comes out of Jacksonville a little bit grainier? It is. I have noticed that for years. Well, but years. this is yes. what I'm talking about. The whole game had like a film on it. Yeah. The whole Jacksonville Seattle game had a right. It, it felt it felt dirty. And what I found myself doing is getting closer to the television because those are the parts of football that I find most interesting. Is they keep sort of trying to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it, and then next thing you know, somebody's throwing a beer at a dude, and now you're in that apocalyptic time. Like and he's trying and and you are grateful as he is enraged. This giant is enraged because you have disrespected him by throwing a can from the Gladiator Arena at him. Right. And never in your life have you been more grateful that those walls at those football stadiums are tall because he was enraged and he went to climb a wall in a way a man his size shouldn't be climbing a wall. And if he had been able to get up on that wall, Stugatz, you would have had violent footage. Oh, no question about it. Uh, Quentin Jefferson is his name, and you're right. Uh, he tried to climb those walls, the railings, and had he gotten there, had he gotten to that fan, it would have gotten really, really well, ugly. How, did you guys hear the sound? I don't know if you guys have it back there. Jalen Ramsey is, and I really like Jalen Ramsey. He's a great football player and an interesting personality. He's not afraid of anybody as good an athlete as florida state has ever produced and i know Deion sanders went there like this kid is really good yep and he knows it and did you hear how this because that game yesterday he kind of warned you that it was coming because they asked him about respecting seattle and he gave them no respect he was like no 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 that's what they did we're here now we are here now, and Seattle is a violent football team. Yes, Seattle, Seattle is, and a prideful one. Yeah, and yes. a, right, and right, and so what that that game to me, to me, everything in that game, and I know how dirty it was, all of it. I'm like, on a great football Sunday, I'm like, that's the dirtiest football I've seen this year, and I saw that Cincinnati, Pittsburgh game. It wasn't that. This game had the good fortune of not having the concussion hits that will get up, be scandals, and a guy, you know, that you fear paralysis for. But if I dropped that into the middle of it, it'd be the, the, the most popular sport in this apocalypse I've created. <laughs> right? Yes. It, it would, that game would be the most, like, if I, th- if I merge the two games, the, the Pittsburgh Cincinnati game where two guys were suspended for hits that were violent and another guy looked like he was paralyzed and everything that was happening in the grainy footage of that gray Jacksonville stench as, I mean, it, it that game looked like it was being played in a sewer. 
<laughs> and should have been. <laughs> well, technically it is. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> sorry, man. You're, you're not text sorry. Ah, Baselli uh, probably not, agrees with you're me. You're not sorry. No, but but did anyone else experience it this, that way? I'm telling you, look, man, I have not been somebody who the entirety of my life has believed in, like, the ideas of energies and forces. But every other game that I watched on Sunday had light in it. This one was spewing <laughs> evil, man. My television was radiating something that was haunted. Every time that they went to from the red zone to the Seattle Jacksonville game, I had like a chill come up my skin because I'm like, "Ooh, that is dirty." We were all sort of squinting at our televisions the same way because that's the first time any of us have watched a Jacksonville Jags game at home since what? 2007? Let's be real. I mean, it's been a minute. We all discovered that look of that stadium. But we together. were drawn to it by an evil force. Like, we were drawn to it, or if you were drawn to it, because there was some great football played yesterday. There really was. One of the best football weekends of the year for the NFL, no doubt. And it helped not having college for the NFL, because you really look forward to Sunday. I didn't, I didn't realize that until yesterday, how much college, watching college football was affecting me watching the NFL. Because when it wasn't there, man, was I looking forward to 1 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, well, and also this season, Saturdays were a tough act to follow in many right. respects. Yes, but there were some great games, you're right. I mean, yeah, it's how the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game and the Rams-Philadelphia game is, is what I've been longing for. I want those games so badly. Football's great fun when it's like that. And I'll take in the interim, just give us content, like some of these dark force games. Right, but I can't. When was the last time? I I don't think I remember. I know there have been violent series before, but Jacksonville, Seattle, had to it something extra. No, something like it. It felt like it stopped being competition and just became like gladiator spectacle. If a lion had jumped out and dragged Blake Bortles to the sideline by an ankle, would you have been surprised? No. Nope. A lion on a chain. If something, if a door had popped open and some sort of apocalyptic creature had come out of the end zone, I'm, I'm, I just don't, I'm trying to figure out when's the last time I felt something exactly like that watching a football game where it was, did anyone else, ex first of all, am I alone with this? Did anyone else experience it this way? Because I might be alone with it. Just the idea of that's one of the, that is one of the most hostile things I've ever seen in sporting competition. And I saw Mike Tyson bite Evander Holyfield's ear and it ended at the end of it because Seattle had lost and Seattle's prideful and they're stubborn and they're defiant. They just go dirty. Bennett goes dirty. He should be suspended for everything at the end of that. Mm. You can't be diving at people's knees. If you're going to suspend Gronk for brain damage, you got to suspend Bennett for going at knees at the end of that game. And they then, probably will. And instigating everything that happened there. Um, Are you saying the Bills-Colts game had more light than the Jacksonville game? Oh, that's pretty good. Now merge that game. Let's talk about that game for a second. That game was fun. What was it, though? I love a what? good snow it was, game. It was surprisingly yeah. fun. Most snow games are trash. That game was surprisingly what, the, fun. The, what, the reason I was going to say was it fun is because I feel like it was fun for sure for seven minutes. And then I'm like, okay, I don't want to watch slow football. If I wanted to watch slow football, I'd be running around in my front yard playing football with my dad. I don't want to watch football look <laughs> slow. For seven minutes, I'll like the novelty. And I have to admit, I do have to admit this. This this is both where the, the fun peaked for me, and soon thereafter, I knew it wouldn't get any better than this <laughs> during that game. Old Nathan Peterman. Our good friend Nathan Peterman yep. is scrambling to the right side and he gets just broken in half violently. And our good buddy Nathan Peterman is headed to the concussion protocol. I think I, 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 I'm just watching the television. I don't have reports. I'm just watching. He looks concussed to me. And you know how I lament violence all the time, shaking a fist. He has so much ice on his face 
and all over his helmet, like just plastered on the side where he got flattened and where his brain was concussed. And I'm like, funny. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. That's not good. I don't like that you got brain damage there, but you look funny. He it said, looks it looks like a fun cushion. A fun cushion. It, I mean, because it, 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 did, everything's more fun in the snow, right? I, it's just well, I don't think he thought it was fun. Probably not. I'm saying I gave my per- I gave myself permission to laugh at something that was clearly not good for that man's brain because it was Nathan Peterman, but because it was Nathan Peterman's brain, and because he had ice all in sheets, like he'd just been tackled and you saw where the tackle was. It was like police tape ice on the side of his face, like you saw. Oh, there is where he landed. And look, it's smushed, and it's on the side of his face, and that must have hurt because that was that formed on his face because he was hitting something hard. Wasn't funny at the time, but it is funny. No, now. but it was. No, it was funny when he got up and he's woozy, and I'm worried for him. But it passes, engulfed by laughter. Sorry, man, you guys made the sport. I'm just living with it. Don Lebatard. Guillermo Sassy. Stugats. You're sexy when you're sassy. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebatard Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guests on the Dan Lebatard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Patriots at Dolphins tonight, 8.30 on ESPN. The Philadelphia Eagles are concerned that quarterback Carson Wentz tore his left ACL. And finally, Morrissey has canceled or postponed 127 concerts since 2012. Smooth plays call for smooth bourbon. Larceny bourbon is made with more wheat for a smoother taste. Our master distillers hand-select only the finest barrels for a true small-batch bourbon. Get caught in the act with Larceny Bourbon. Think wisely, drink wisely. Larceny Bourbon, Bardstown, Kentucky, 46% alcohol by volume. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. You're talking about the flightiness of artists there like Morrissey. I hadn't mentioned, I can't believe I hadn't mentioned before now, that uh, I actually hung out with Wu-Tang on Saturday night. And, you did, huh? And, uh, but the funny thing was, was watching how, how late everyone in their crew arrived for a nine o'clock show and uh, Method Man sort of just being grateful, profoundly grateful that whatever time it was, 1230, everybody was there. Like just everyone had arrived. I actually had a conversation. <laughs> I actually had a conversation with a guy I thought was Wu-Tang's manager because he introduced himself as Wu-Tang's manager. And then right. Method Man comes up, and I'm like, hey, I was just talking to your manager. And, and Method Man says, Wu-Tang has a lot of manager. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what time did they get started? Oh, what time? Whatever, you know, very late. You stayed up that late? Yeah. You could still stay up that yes. late? Yes. Oh, they, I... uh, they hit the stage at, uh, I think, 12.50. What? Yeah. Oh, they, just, they but, knew what they were getting but, into, but, though. The set time was twelve thirty. Right, but. Right. but I mean, you just you just get there. You you just you as long as Wu Tang gets there. Is everyone here? All right, maybe not. Let's go. When they hit the stage, I was counting, making sure all of them were there. Did uh, you nap before this concert? Or? <laughs> no. Uh, Saturdays are my big night. So listen, um, I wanted to I wanted to talk about some of the things that happened in yesterday's games because the, this is the football I fell in love with, which is. Oh Lord, this looks dangerous. Like all of it. Like I, I, I mean, never mind that I couldn't do any of what was happening out there. But you know, Savage is having a seizure on the field. What looks like a seizure, and they put him back in the game. And then everything that was that's all over the televisions now, which this feels like the gladiator spectacle. Yeah, that people are throwing beers and drinks. At this guy who's got his helmet off and he's enraged. I believe it's Quentin Jefferson of the Seahawks yes. in that Jaguar game. And I got to tell you, security did a very good job there because those walls were not as big as I thought they were. And he could have easily gotten into the stands and taken care that of business. Could have gotten, uh, yes. That could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, that ball guy in security that was holding him back should actually be playing for the Seahawks offensive line. They could use him. He was incredible blocking but, that. But, but what I'm saying about football, Stugatz, and the XFL tried this, right? But one of the things we're always talking about around here about about football is the idea 
that the NFL wants you to think that it's this pure patriotic thing. And no, football is on the outer edges of violent chaos. Right. And so what happens yesterday, the dangerous is an electricity, and the XFL tried to play with that by embracing it. I just asked Guillermo to try and get some sound cleared. Listen to this, you guys. Jeff Brom is um, uh, the Purdue coach. He played in the XFL. And there's this great clip that Eric Rideholm, the producer of Highly Questionable, sent my way of Jeff Brom as a player. And they just show this like montage of Jeff Brom getting hit. And you see him on the ground plastered with his helmet sideways. Like he's laying clearly with his nose to the sky, but his helmet's not. Okay, so his helmet, the side of his helmet is on his face, and they're interviewing guys like who were at the game, and it's like, yeah, I saw his nose. It was like in his ear, and it's just a really disgusting hit, and then they're showing him in a neck brace and stuff. And then six days later, he's playing again, and he comes to the microphone, and it's an XFL interview, and it's like a wrestling interview. Jeff Brom, how are you playing after this montage of just incredible violence? And he's like, and, you know, he does a wrestling bit of, like, two questions. Are we breathing? And is it time to play football? <laughs> and then he runs on the fan. He runs right. And but what I'm saying is that's what like how great would that Seattle Jacksonville game had been if it had embraced all of the things that it is instead of what's going to inevitably happen here, which everyone's going to get in trouble and optics and they're going to rain down penalties because it looks bad for the league. And, and then it won't happen as much. I mean, are you sure? Because I don't think I don't Jacksonville know. and Seattle were thinking about consequences yesterday when any of that was happening. <laughs> like, I think if that's going to happen, it's going to happen at any time in history. But the thing that you want, they have a system in place that prevents that thing from happening more often. The thing that you love, the thing that you fell in love with, the thing that you saw yesterday I'm, I'm just in talking, moments. No, I'm just talking about the danger of it right. all. The yeah. danger of it all is part of its appeal. Yeah. It is. No, it's totally no, part but, of its but, appeal. But what I'm saying to you, Stugatz, is do you realize that the NFL is now doing everything that it possibly can to make you either think or feel like it's not that dangerous? That's where it becomes the cigarette stuff. Right. Like the NFL wants very much for it to be safe or safer. And it's like, no, part of the appeal is this is grotesque. It's violent. I'm scared of it, and I would never do it. It's just like why I watch those people jump from cliffs in those squirrel suits. <laughs> Like, I'll watch him do it. I'm not interested in doing it myself. We know football is boxing. We still watch boxing because we know the inherent risks that are in it, and we don't have the same concern. Football's trying to convince us that it's not boxing. But that's the appeal. Dan just hit on it. That's the appeal. It's not something I would do myself. Because the appeal for me growing up watching football, I could play golf. Not well, but I can go play golf. I can imagine myself hitting a baseball. baseball, I can go out to my driveway and shoot jumpers, okay? I could never imagine myself doing what those guys do on Sunday. We can't do that. We wouldn't do it. We don't do it. Part of its appeal is its danger. It's an, it's an insanity. It's one, but can I ask you the question? Seattle Jacksonville, if I turn this all on its head, because what this week is going to be is the NFL and ESPN and Fox all working in television partnerships to broadcast with very stern tones how it is that you shouldn't throw things at the players and the players shouldn't react that way and the league will come down hard on all because that is the moral and the right way to be. But can you imagine if we flipped it and we made it pro wrestling and we embraced what happened in Seattle, in Jacksonville yesterday? If we embraced it the way the XFL was trying to Embrace it. Instead of selling us family purity on Sundays, we're family friendly. When you're not, man. Right. You're not family friendly. I saw what happened to Nathan Peterman. You could be with your kids watching the snow and look, kids, look how great it is. The snow. It's funny. But that dude's brain got scrambled on ice, man. And he might have an ice pick in his brain for all I know after playing in that game. But it's safe. But if if you're going to make it the gladiator spectacle, the barbaric thing that it is, can you imagine how cool it would be if they embraced that? Yes. Yes, we are the gods of today. We are more violent than you. You should be scared at us. You throw a beer at us, there had better be a giant wall between you and I, for my rage will bring you tumbling down for your disrespect. I know, I made a game of no, drums. No, I'll, I'll settle for them did, just yeah. speaking that way in <laughs> interviews. Yeah, it'd be totally so Russell Wilson fun. could say nothing, but if he says it that way... <laughs> It'd be more interesting. I think you're right. (laughs) But can you imagine? Like, it's not going to happen. But don't you think, how do you, all right, let me ask you this question. 
How would you feel about that right now? Lord. Both teams put forth a solid effort. We played 60 minutes. Wait a minute, you're just oh, LeVar Ball. Yeah. I was being an old gladiator. Oh, really? Undefeated, just... never lost. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Game of Thrones is my LeVar Ball. Yeah. Yeah. I was being an old soldier. I, yeah. Why were you LeVar Ball yeah, there? It's the same voice. <laughs> I am undefeated, never lost. Yeah, That's Weird, man. Same voice. Don Lebatard. Michael Jordan never scored 70 in a game. No, but he scored 60-something in a legendary playoff game that they won. Stugatz. They lost. Did they really? They lost, yeah. Wow, breaking they, news. Yeah. Spoiler they, alert. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. I don't understand how it's possible that Josh Gordon can go from years without playing football and being high and being addicted to stuff to stepping onto a field and being the single most athletic person on it. <laughs> Playing on that team, too. Yeah, I mean, with those quarterbacks. That's another game I would have sent off to that amusement park land into a different orbit of crud where I would send all of uh, last uh, yesterday's bad football game. Well, that was a big game for your favorite football player. So, no, I would have kept that right. game right here no, on Earth. No, need, the Packers yeah. needed oh, that but game. It was just such right. a crud football. It was terrible, but the Packers got a victory, and now it's set up for Aaron Rodgers to come in and save the day. Take him to the Super Bowl. All right, so this person is writing in about violence. Bleep, Levitard, enough with the bashing of football. Don't watch it then, especially since it's not even the most violent sport. You don't get the show. I wasn't complaining about football the first half hour of this national show. I was celebrating it. That's the stuff I love about football. But that's also football's moral conundrum, that the stuff they love that makes it wildly entertaining to me is something that they're trying to eradicate from their sport unsuccessfully. Right. I mean, they kind of have to, right, put out that message. Whatever message they're putting out here recently is is the message. Because, Dan, anyone who watches the sport, who loves the sport, who is our age, they know how violent it is. They know. Okay, but imagine, though, if all of that were produced the way that the WWE produces things. So we've got this sound here. Mike, how long is this Jeff Brom sound? Uh, it's uh, 20 seconds long, courtesy of the WWE. Okay, now, so I have to set the stage for you, right? Because this is a bunch of montages where they're showing an incredibly violent hit in the XFL. And Jeff Brom, again, I'm going to describe this for you. He's a quarterback, and he's laying on his back, and his nose should be in the sky. But his helmet is sideways, totally sideways. So you see the ear hole where his nose should be. And the nose is splattered. Like, and so, and he doesn't look like he can move. Like, he looks like he, rigor mortis has said it. And so the announcers are marveling. How is it possible that this man is going to play again in six days? He's walking around with a neck brace. I'm certain that he wouldn't have passed anyone's concussion protocol. <laughs> and this is what happened. Jeff Brom, how in the world are you starting this game tonight after taking that hit just six days ago? Well, let me answer, let me answer that question by asking you two questions. One, is this or is this not the XFL? Yes, it is. Two, do I or do I not currently have a pulse? Yes, I do. Let's play football. Yeah. I'm saying if you go into that locker room yesterday and instead <laughs> of this guy, Jefferson, who has to be contrite and apologize because, but also say, you're not going to disrespect me. If instead he was standing in front of his locker, damn straight, I almost went up into the stands. <laughs> throw throw something else to get me. I, I, I throw out something else at me again and see if both teams aren't climbing up there next time. Right. <laughs> but you yeah, can't. it'd be more entertaining, certainly, yes. And you'd be embracing what it is you actually are. Right. That's exactly right, which is my only objection. My only <laughs> objection. Well, I, I don't love how unhealthy it's been and, and disguised as lies, but my, my only objection about football, my largest one, I guess, would be that. The, just quit lying to us about what it is, man. It's unbelievably unhealthy. And at its unhealthiest, it's also the most fun. That Jeff Brom clip jacked me up. How is Purdue not so much better? <laughs> but, Mike, it, it, because everything on television this week is going to be about, like, is the league in crisis? But all of this is content. It only becomes crisis because we treat it as crisis instead of as entertainment. 
You think that's going to be conversation this week? Really? No, the conversation this week is going to be about castigating. Should fans throw things at people? How should fan? How should athletes how should behave players react when, when, a when, fan... when fans <laughs> throw things at people? And I don't know. I kind of react the same way the athlete reacted if someone threw a beer at me, right? I remember I told you this. This is a story. I don't know. Maybe it was written in one of those books about ESPN. Uh, that uh, is it, Jim Miller. I don't want to get the name wrong. Miller is the author of the books that about ESPN, the Chronicles of ESPN. Uh, now I got stuck on the name, and he writes about all. Of, what was I talking about? I lost my place. I'm the sorry. ESPN book. It's James Miller, by the way. Thank you. Quick. Yeah, no, it's no, not. That's, not. that's what James, I was worried Jim, about. Yeah, See, whatever. this is what I was worried about. Jim Miller is a quarterback, I, whole, former quarterback I know for the Bears. Jim, yeah. It's Jim Miller. He goes by Jim. Well, Did you know that Jim. that's short for James? Mm. The, the story that I was telling was about after the malice in the palace, after Ron Artest and Steven Jackson climbed into the stands, the coverage that night, Stugatz, by Stephen A. Smith, I think uh, John Saunders, a couple of others, the coverage that rained down from ESPN in one voice was, don't throw things at the players. Don't throw things at the players. And then I turned on my television the following day, and those same guys were on television saying something very different because a call had been made by the former president of this company saying that's not how we're going to talk about that because we're partners with the league and you just had players punching fans. We're not all going to start ripping the customers on television. So what I saw the night before was one set of opinions, and then what I saw the following morning was a different set of opinions. And I was like, wait a minute. How did that happen and why did that happen? It happened because all of these parties are working together to castigate the entertainment, to wag a finger at don't throw at the player, don't react that way, which is only the most obvious thing in the world. But once it happens, if you're Jeff Brom, if you've got Jeff Brom's attitude, wouldn't, wouldn't sports be more fun? Be vastly more unsportsmanlike, but I don't want Brian McCann as commissioner of all sports. <laughs> you want sports to be fun. I prefer Vince McMahon as my commissioner of sports, or Dana White, or <laughs> you, Conor McGregor, like or Don King. Like I, I know those guys are impure. Not Goodell. Like he's all these people, but he's in a he's in a suit that's starch. He's not even made out of human things. It's just an assortment of. <laughs> Other people. Cash more of the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, Geico cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the Geico legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit Geico.com or download the Geico app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. I feel like everything we just did was racially insensitive, and I'm good with it. Stugatz. It is deadline day. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. So, person is writing here on Twitter at Lebatard Show. My timeline proves that I get the show, but the number of segments over the past six shows dedicated to bashing the NFL is getting so old. Guys, I don't understand what you're hearing. What am I doing wrong? This was not a bashing of the NFL. The NFL is was in its glory yesterday. Like I really enjoyed that Sunday football yesterday. I don't. What am I doing wrong here? Well, that's, well, well, what you're saying is I'm not saying that you're wrong. You have said it often, and that's fine. Uh, and by the way, Alan Trammell was a uh, was a shortstop, not a second baseman. Before all the vultures come in, Lou Whitaker, yes, was the second baseman. I'm becoming that show now. Yes, and I'm not blaming anyone. I'm I don't becoming that fine, show but, uh, as I morph into Mike Francesa. Yes. Hey, you know who the Tigers' second baseman was in the early '90s? Kid by the name of Whitaker. It was the '80s, but. Was keeping track. Well, that's the part of the that's probably important. fine, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they went thirty-five and five that one year. I think they won the World Series in eighty-four. So uh, you were off by a decade. Where were we? What were we talking about? I forget. That was the eighties. Lou Whitaker. Yes, eighty-four. We we're talking about <laughs> sweet Lou Whitaker is where we ended <laughs> up on this Monday after a great football Sunday. What's going on here is you're saying the NFL should just embrace what it is that they are. And I agree with you. Uh, it comes off as 
just do it that way and don't look back, meaning don't take measures to try to make this game safer for the players well, no, because I, that is important. No, but I was just talking. I'm not saying that's what you're saying. It I, comes off I like was, that a little well, bit. I was just saying within the spirit of Jacksonville, Seattle Sunday and the other day, Cleveland, or not Cleveland, Pittsburgh uh, playing against Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting back to something again, do we? If you had to guess, the first person that used one of those flying squirrel suits, did they live? If you had to guess, like sometimes people die in 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 the experimenting of invention, right? And that's why one of the many reasons you got to salute the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers got up there, took some stones, they man. Some stones. Those yeah. Wright brothers have stones. We should call them. We should now call them instead of stones, Wright brothers. He's got big Wright brothers. <laughs> Seriously. Like, the first person to jump off a cliff in one of those flying squirrel suits uh, by Red Bull, or I don't think they're by Red Bull, but they're always sponsored by Red Bull, and they fly down this mountain. And I saw this the other day, and I was horrified. I spent the entire time horrified, thinking that something was going to come in the sky and hit one of the people in the face. They're going 200 miles an hour. I got Right? I, th- I think they're going 200 miles an hour. They're falling. I'm not sure, Earl. Uh, I mean, you know, it's called you know, base jumping, isn't it? Somewhere? I mean, no, but it's not. It's man, I can't explain what this thing is. They jump from a cliff. The video I saw the other day was just ten people jumping like lemmings off a cliff, opening their arms, and then the suits become these flying vessels that they use. And what I'm asking you is, the first person who did that, did that person live? That person has to have died. He did. He yeah. did. Yeah. He, he lived did. or he died? No, he died. he died. Oh, he did. He died. He tried jumping off the Eiffel Tower. Didn't work out. Hmm. Oh! It's in 1912. Okay. So how many people after that, though? Like, you don't With want to... With a cape, though? He had... Uh, he a... built his flying squirrel suit. <laughs> right? Wait a minute. I mean, is this a you cape? Well, a... I mean, it's is kind of like the Red Bull cape. cape. Got, the Red got, Bull does have a cape. I think they have a cape. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. They're more like wings, two guys. A cape? You've got them being superheroes? I mean, what they're doing does look super heroic. In fact, I can't think of anything humans do that is that looks more super heroic than this particular thing I'm describing. Yeah, he uh, had a parachute with him just in case things... Uh didn't go well things didn't go well it only sort of half deployed and it didn't turn out well he's a french dude well he's dead Mike. yeah that is the way that you would do that though the, the, that's a good move i because i hadn't considered that when i was asking the question the first guy who did it i hadn't thought that in an emergency he would have a parachute that would help although in this instance it did not apparently I'm looking at his suit right now. Much different than find the, ones the that second person. Work. Find the second person who tried this. I'm saying you're going to find hundreds of people before we got it right. I'm just going to Google first successful. Oh, but do you even understand? Do suit. you even understand these parkour people? Do you understand what I'm asking you guys is? Because I am not a thrill these seeker. Are, these are not parkour people. No, no, no. This, I'm talking about something different now. you know what now. parkour is? Yes, I know what parkour is. What I'm saying to you, these people who... I don't. This, it is sort of... Um, it's just sort of gymnastics on a... On How is a he of- trying to spell parkour? Yeah, okay. It's not important. I'm working on successful right now uh, for the uh, squirrel jumper. I don't know how to spell squirrel either. All right. I mean, this is bad. <laughs> all right. Don't look anything else up and just listen to the show for a minute. All right. Okay. Stop okay. using all of that brain power to misspell words there and concentrate your brain power here, right here. Okay. Parkour is sort of like, yeah, you've seen the James Bond Casino Royale movie where people are like they're running away from each other for 10 minutes and they're climbing on buildings and scaffoldings and that sort of stuff. Okay. The the people who take these pictures in perilous positions, you know, you read these stories all the time. Guy dies trying to just sell, take selfie, you know, hanging to the bottom of a cliff. Who are these people? Do you know any of them? I don't feel like any of these people are in my life. They're, they are the same sort of thrill seekers, right? To be that flippant in my life. You know, I, I get scared. All these videos I see of people doing parkour or doing handstands on the edge of a building. Right. You know, 150 stories in the sky. And, and I'm like, why would you do that? Am I alone with this? Uh, no, you're not alone. I've often thought about it. I just figured, hey, they're thrill-seeking. That's what they do. That's what they love. They get off on thrill-seeking, on doing stuff like that. And they're trying to outdo each other. And they always have a GoPro on. 
But I, 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 yes, because they want the attention for what it is that they're doing. But unlike football, which I would never do because it looks like it would hurt too much, I still enjoy watching it. Some of this stuff with buildings and stuff, I get scared and I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch any of it because I feel like they're disrespecting the precious gift of life. So I got more. No, and it offends me. I'm not even kidding you. Really? <laughs> even if I know that I wouldn't be watching the video unless the person was totally safe about doing it. It's their life, though. I know, but I don't love how flippant they are. If they're going to be that flippant with their youth, sell some of it to me. I'll buy it from you. They would argue that you could walk across the street and have a greater chance of getting killed doing that than doing what they're doing. They would argue that. I'm telling you, they would argue that. Have you always noticed that there's also a story that follows about what a bright future these people would have? <laughs> Clearly not. Why can't it just say this person died? They were an idiot. Right. The, the, <laughs> why? What bright future would this person have had with this kind of judgment, um, you know, falling from a skyscraper because you were trying to get uh, four Insta Instagram likes? So and I have more on this wingsuit. In 1912, that dude Franz, he, he jumped to his death. He landed skull first. Which oh, is, my oh, wow. God. Uh, I mean, See, you might is, want to you... start with something lower than the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> or higher. No, Hi higher, higher would probably, probably have given. In this given... particular instance, higher. <laughs> higher. You got to higher. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What just happened? Higher. Hold on a second. <laughs> you realize that the parachute would have had even more trouble deploying. Did we just stump Stugats on physics? I'm saying like off or a curve. Math or math. Math. Did we just stump the guts on physics or math there? I think both. Yeah. First successful use of a wingsuit, though, uh, happened several years later. This uh, first attempt was in 1912. The first successful one was uh, in 1933. Uh, by Oh, 1930. By an American. We did it. Yeah. Hey! Look yeah, at the nice. mustache on that guy. Nice. Or is that Franz? Was that Franz? That was, was Franz the... that they showed oh, on television. Franz. Rest in peace. Franz. Uh, <laughs> wow. Unbelievable that his death from the Eiffel Tower would be the second most <laughs> egregious judgment error in his life, uh, following only that mustache that he chose to wear on his face. But Rex Finney did it in 1930 as, as a 19-year-old American. As of 2010, they have jet-powered wingsuits. Wow. Kind of takes away the whole thing That's from That's right? cheating, yeah. Well, wait a minute. These things, the things that I'm watching are jet powered? No. No, I haven't even seen one of the jet powered ones yet. That, that'd be pretty gnarly. Would you do that? No. Jet no, powered, though. No, none of these things. I'm afraid to watch them. I'd pay so much money. Me to watch squeezing you do it. into one of these suits? <laughs> hey, Stugatz, I'm having a midlife crisis. Watch me jump off this cliff. <laughs> you don't need the suit. You already have the flaps. Payday! Payday! It is payday! I don't get the joke. Flab suit? You didn't get it? What's the joke? Your arms are fat. <laughs> I clear it up? Thank you. Thank you for clearing it up. Don Libertard. Marriage at some point, I think for a lot of people, they get down to, and this is really a sad part about marriage, where you're just having sex one day a week. And that one day a week is Sunday. And so I love Sundays, but I hate everything I have to do leading up till Sunday, which is essentially agree with everything my wife says and does everything she asked me to do. And I'm only doing that for the Sundays. Because if I don't do it, there ain't no Sundays. And I can't live without my Sundays. Stugats. I wonder if Abby hates Sundays. Oh, she despises them. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Stugats, have you seen, before we get to weekend observations, have you seen the video that's gone viral here of this kid, Keaton Jones, who was being bullied at school? No, I have not. All right, it went viral this week, and we'll play the sound for the people later in the show. And before I've even gotten to talk about it, Stugats, already, before I, it's a, it is a feel good story because sports and people rallied around this kid who was blubbering, really sad about how he's been bullied. And a lot of people, LeBron James, bunch of people have come out moved by it. You know, parents can understand how helpless it feels to see your child bullied. Sure. His mother videotaped it. And before I can even get to the story, it's already being reported that the mother has some stuff in her past that's race related. And it's like, wait a minute, can we slow down? Man. Slow down. Just let me, let me enjoy the story for a second, for a second, for a second. Right. And now, now we're digging around in her past. But, anyways, before we get to that story, let's do Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. 
No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my voice, too. Weekend observations are brought to you by Metro PCS. Choose four free phones from brands like Samsung, LG, and Motorola when you switch four lines to Metro PCS. Sales tax not included. Not valid for numbers currently on the T-Mobile network. Dan, the Golden State Warriors are better without Steph Curry. Derek Jeter's top three Yankee moments. Number three, the flip against the A's. Number two, the dive against the Red Sox. And the new number one, the heist against the Marlins. Derek Jeter, more like Derek Cheater. Jeets, more like cheats. Rob Manfred, you allowed this. You allowed a man to purchase a team with no money, no experience, and apparently no integrity. Simply Whoa. because his name is Derek Jeter. No one and for that, you should be ashamed of yourself. What happened there? You didn't like the integrity line? I mean, this guy has come down here and done nothing right. He has fired luminaries. He has fired people who are on their deathbed. He has fired sick people, Dan, and he hasn't done them himself. You know who he has do it? He has David Sampson, the former Marlins president. He has him doing his dirty work. Zero integrity. I said you agree with me now. No. Oh, you think he has integrity? Just keep it moving. All right. Dan thinks he has integrity. The Derek Jeter doesn't... It, Stugat thinks he doesn't have integrity. He doesn't. He's the captain, all right. The captain of all the other people who are pulling wool over people's eyes. <laughs> Good luck with jersey sales in Miami when your last name is Castro. We need to throw a parade to bring Jeffrey Loria back. The Browns are better without Sashi Brown. The Giants are worse with Eli Manning. Ben McAdoo was right. The 49ers have found their quarterback. I want to say that one day the Patriots will regret trading Jimmy Garoppolo, but they won't. Good chance Brady and Garoppolo will be in the same Hall of Fame no, class. No, Garoppolo's going to die of natural causes, and Brady's still going to have a 20-1 to <laughs> one interception to touchdown. Right? I'm telling you, Jimmy Graps is the real deal. That guy is good. I'm telling you, John Lynch, he's going to go into the Hall of Fame as an executive simply because he got Jimmy Graps. I, he's that good. I've watched him the last two weeks. The 49ers have found their quarterback. The Kansas City Chiefs are back. Rare is the running back that possesses both thunder and lightning. Todd Gurley is one of the few. Doug Peterson going for it on fourth and goal. Down four in the third quarter. Stones. Nice of the Bills. Right, brother. (laughs) Nice of the Bills to wear the red jerseys against the Colts. To honor Jim Ursay's face. It's amazing. Even in a blizzard and temperatures of 15 below zero, the color of Jim Ursay's face doesn't change. Also, not the first time he's been surrounded by that much white powder. To the people who attended the Bills, what happened there? I mean, it's not the first time, and perhaps it won't be the last time. To the, I said perhaps there. To the people... Who attended the Bills Colts game yesterday? Why? Chuck Pagano tried to tell you a storm was coming. Pagano thinks he's living out the Bill Murray movie Groundhog Day. Pretty soon he's going to be living out Aloha. Perhaps my joke was lost in translation. What I'm trying to say is Chuck Pagano is getting fired because he was the man who knew too little. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Josh Gordon, speaking of good, is good. Christ, my wife just asked me who that is. And that who is Sean McVay. Case closed. (laughs) It's time to bring back Teddy Bridgewater. Derek Jeter will be the first Yankee to get two monuments in Monument Park. One as a player and one as an executive.
Jared Goffed one up. I almost screwed that up, Mike. You notice that? Jared Goffed one up. Jameis Winston ate another L. Dan, the evil empire, is back. Aaron Boone, welcome to the world of expectations. Philadelphia Eagles never has a team lost so much while winning. The Eagles' Super Bowl chances came and went. Steelers, Brady, made it out of their own stadium. Alive. Barely, that was. Made it out of their own stadium. Not Brady. Alive. Not Brady. It wasn't supposed to be Brady. It was ba- so barely became barely. Brady. Yes. Steelers, Brady, yes. made it out of their stadium. Well, I had a Steelers-Brady, just to defend myself, I had a, a Steelers-Brady game note in there, and Mike took it out, and I went back to that one, and he took it out because it was a bad one. Yeah, it wasn't finished. It yeah. was just Steelers Brady. No, it was Roethlisberger finish. Brady, one for the ageless. Uh, you know, and but, it was bad. And he took you, it out. You yeah. forgot to finish that line. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Steelers barely made it out of their own stadium <laughs> alive. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger threw for damn near yeah. a third of a mile last night. <laughs> right. I don't have a joke here. Right. The Ravens secondary yeah. was the joke. Right. The Yankees have a better offensive line than the Jets and Giants. Somewhere during overtime of Bill's Colts, Chris Furrister tried to snort his television. Steelers, Ravens, one for the ages. That's where I was going to go. Steelers, Patriots, one for the ageless. But Mike took it out because that joke was bad. And so now we've done it three times. Yeah, Ripken, Favre, A.C. Green, and Scott Hansen's bladder. All great streaks must come to an end. Hell of a run, Scott. Packers getting hot and healthy at the right time. Derek Jeter, Mr. November, and Mr. December. I wonder if Oklahoma City would trade Paul George and Carmelo Anthony to the Pacers for Victor Oladipo. Giancarlo Stanton, when you take your next stroll down the easy path, make sure you say hello to Kevin Durant and know this any World Series you win with the Yankees won't count as a World Series win for you in my My personal personal record record book overpay to own a Major League Baseball team and trade your best player to your former team the team and the city that matters most to you awfully long way to win back The new popularity contest from A-Rod. John Fox said he expects the Bears to fire him. John, that's a reasonable expectation. Pretty sure Tariq Cohen is tired of Fox's spiel. Speaking of Tariq Cohen, he averaged 6.66 yards per carry. That's the kind of stat line Art Bryles loves seeing when he's watching his football in hell. <laughs> Don Lebatard. And finally, an unearthed letter from Tupac to Madonna reveals that he broke up with Madge in part because of a comment she made about rehabilitating rappers and because he feared his fans wouldn't accept him dating a white woman. Stugatz. Woman. What did I say? Women. Oh. Uh, woman. You always make the singular plural. I don't know why I do that. You always make the plural singular. Yeah. So it's white woman. Bingo. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So Carson Wentz is out, and any analysis that you had about the first 12 weeks of the football season don't matter. Whoever you thought was best, none of that matters. It's who's healthiest at the end. You said that for so many years. It is who's healthiest at the end. I mean, I'm not saying the Eagles can't get far in the playoffs without Carson Wentz, but they're not winning a Super Bowl. One of the him. things I marvel about football in football is how much luck goes into all of this stuff where these people are trying to contain so many of the results. For example, Stu Gatz, I'm always talking to you about how heavy-handed coaches are, how fearful they are while demanding discipline of others. The way the Steelers played at the end of that game last night, why don't they play like that all the time? Because it feels reckless. They've got so many weapons. Why don't the Steelers play Let's go with 500 yards of Ben football. Right. Like, let's just attack. We're going to throw the ball 66 times today. Like, we're going to go crazy. Like, 
Well, he's the first to post three 500-yard games in his career. I mean, you can't really... Obviously, you have that in your arsenal. No, but then I'm you saying, can go to I'm it saying, when you no, need no, it. But no, Le'Veon Bell is like, you I want know, to establish no, but, that. No, but I'm saying they throw to him plenty, too, and you can establish it handing it to him. I'm yeah. just saying that, in general, what you see from the Pittsburgh Steelers is a neutered version of themselves because even though it's a great offense and they've got those great skills players because they're still playing a little bit scared, what happens at the end of that game last night is you become so panicked and desperate that reckless stops mattering. Right. You're taking risk all over the place. Yeah, of course you are. You're right. You have to. You have no choice. But what I'm saying is... Do it all the time. Yes. Right. I, I think the next market correction in this sport where someone explores an inefficiency is someone will try, and maybe they'll fail, to go in there and play the way Texas Tech does. I know that Chip Kelly was trying it. He failed. But Chip Kelly was trying to get that. Maybe the field just doesn't allow for it. It's not big enough. The athletes are too big and strong. It can't be done. It's fun to watch when it's going on, though. I mean, when, when right. the Steelers are that desperate right. and reckless, you always, it's kind of like with the Warriors when they're down like eight, you know, late in the fourth quarter and watching them trying to climb back into the game. It's always fun but, to watch. Watching that Steeler team, it's just chaotic. Well, but here's what <laughs> I would say to you. Here's what I would say to you, Stugatz. Which Steeler team do you think has the better chance against the Patriots? The one at the end of the game last night or the one the Steelers have been trotting out there again and again, neutered and, you know, comparatively risk free? I mean that that Steeler team is eleven and two, but but to your point, they have not been successful against Tom They've Brady. They've never and the been Patriots. successful against right. that team, and the Patriots are just out go there. wing it everywhere. But what, just but go, what, yeah. I'm sa- what I'm saying to you is, there is a team out there playing that way offensively. It's the Patriots, right? So imagine now Belichick with the pieces that Tomlin has. My guess is that he would be playing a style of ball that makes the running back largely irrelevant. He would take advantage of the skill set that he has because the Patriots are basically playing all the time the way the Steelers played the last... But you're the, saying he'd throw the ball even more the, to Le'Veon the, Bell the, the reason is. the Patriots were able to come back from 28-3 to three in the Super Bowl against the Falcons is because they play that way all the time. Right. But is, is that what you're saying? I'm that talking you would... speed and go. Let's go. Let's because move. I think Let, Carl... Our offense is good. Let's get an advantage by running 100 plays. I guess I think it was Collinsworth last night saying that if Le'Veon Bell played wide receiver, he'd be a number one wide receiver and be very good. You're saying Belichick would do would play more to the player's strength than what Tomlin's doing right now. Well, clearly, I mean Belichick does. I mean, he it got better. the ball nine. Yeah, he had nine catches. Belichick last night. does it better than anybody. Belichick, man, look, you guys explain this to me. Somebody explain this to me, okay? Where else does this happen in this sport? At the beginning of this season, it looked. Like the Patriots' defense was going to be bad. You were never worried. Why? Because that coach was going to figure it out. Give me all the other examples in that sport of something like that that happens. Where you see something for three weeks that you think is bad that then is good. Because now the Patriots' defense is good all of a sudden. And what you saw at that beginning of the season, the Patriots' offense is always good. But what you saw at the beginning of the season was a market improvement. We've seen a market improvement from that. Who else in the league do you trust where you're watching two or three games, you see something that you think is bad, and you believe that that's going to get turned around just because? Because he's got a magic wand. Uh, Not in that sport. Uh, Maybe with LeBron and and bad uh, stretches of play from his team. Right, when you've got a monster talent. It never happens with a monster mind. Yeah, if you've got a monster talent, you can go from playing terrible defense to playing adequate defense. But I'm talking about specifically what happens with the Patriots, where you did not doubt that team and any other team in the history of the sport. If you would look at that defense through two or three games, you would have said they're not going to be good at defense this year. Right. That They, they might get to average. They might get to better. They're not going to be good. But the Patriots are good again. Who the bleep else does that? I'm trying to think of. And not only does it, but does it with just a random collection of practice players like Teddy Bruschi and, and Vrabel. Like they may be excellent players or they may have been molded into that. And if they would played in Cleveland, you never would have remembered them in any meaningful way. I mean, maybe Saban at the college level or Pete Carroll, maybe. I don't no, know. No, I don't but have... that's the thing. No, see, that's the thing. You can't do it with Saban either because you don't go from Saban's defenses are bad to they're good. You know, he's always got the best athletes. Right. But when everything else is equal. What's happened with the Patriots this year? You knew going into the season, Stugatz, that the Jacksonville defense was good, and it was good all season. Right. And maybe here and there the Jacksonville offense will surprise you, but you know that the Jacksonville offense isn't really good and that you can't trust their quarterback. That's not going to change. With the Patriots, those things change. Do you get that with Popovich at all? 
I mean, he's got the players. He's not doing it. With, he doesn't have players right now. I mean, <laughs> he has had no players right now. He has also, zero players on his roster. He's right also now. never had the struggle. <laughs> I've never had a reason to doubt Greg Popovich just because they've never given us a reason to doubt. Guillermo's useless sound montage is next. Don Lebertard. That ranks up there as the most humbling moment in my life. Stugatz. That and getting so drunk on white wine on a, on a, on a date one time that I pooped in a parking lot. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did I just say that out loud? That was last week. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton is not happy that the NFL hired former Saints employee Mike Cerullo, the whistleblower who helped start the NFL's investigation into the team levying boundaries for big hits. The USGA and Boundaries. RNA. Bounties. What did I say? Boundaries. Sorry about that. You were worried about levy, uh, levying? Levying was a tough one. I thought it was leveraging because I love to leverage, and it was levying. And But I'm glad I got levying right, but I got uh, boundaries wrong. It's bounties. Levying sounds how I would say the name for those Steelers running back. <laughs> I'd get fined <laughs> for it. Bell. Levying Bell. <laughs> The USGA and RNA also said only video from its tournament telecast, not smartphones or other videos from fans, can be used as evidence of a violation, making it tougher for fans to call in if they think they've seen a violation on TV. What are you guys laughing about? Why Just- does it always sound like Sugaz is being called uh, in the middle of class to read oh, something? Because he doesn't. Because he doesn't no, read anything is, beforehand. This, because this, his retention this and is, absorption is terrible. Help me. No, I mean you I always should, sound like you're reading poorly. You I don't should, even sound. You, it's not merely most broadcasters don't sound like they're reading. You always sound like you're reading. I don't really care what other broadcasters poorly. Sound like. right. I only care about this broadcaster and that broadcaster, and I'm pointing at you right now. But the USGA and RNA also said. What do you mean also said? This is written like it's a follow-up story to a previous story, and there is no other story. So I am thrown off by all... I mean, you can blame me all you want, and I'm not going to blame anyone else by name, but there is someone I should be blaming for why it sounds like I'm reading all the time, so they don't write the way I read. That's an excellent point. Thank you. It's also fine. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, for what? For I didn't blame, blame anyone. Are, you are blaming him uh, for you reading Blaming poorly. who? I didn't say anyone by name. Yeah, but you're blaming someone else. Someone else. All right. Well, I got no money. That's also fine. That's also fine. So now you're up to two dollars. I owe two dollars because I don't. I don't have. I, don't have, right. I mean, and, someone and, wrote my and, update no, poorly. And, and I don't have and, money. No. And if we learn that you do indeed have cash, then then it becomes three dollars. If you get fined for all those things, so now you're going to have to turn your pockets inside out. Now you're going to stand up. Listen to me. No, 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 no. The not bringing of money is Listen on me. me. This stand update. Up. I, stand up. It's on Roy. Stand up. I know it's on Roy. Stand up. Empty your pockets. I'm, am I going to have to bring somebody in here to frisk him? A shakedown? We can bring in the security guard. Keep to an eye this. on him. Look at him. He's trying to slip right out. He's got <laughs> plenty of money. <laughs> oh, I have money. I didn't realize that. Because $3. I just, well, I just paid for Mike's lunch, and I didn't right, realize listen, that, I, they, that Chris gave me the change back. $3. So you are fined, okay? You, $3 you, for you, Roy's listen, mistake? <laughs> this is the fine system that we have in place here. The fine $3. system is that you get fined whenever you make a mistake and blame it on someone else. So that's $1. Right. You get fined whenever it is you get fined and you don't have any money or claim you don't have any money. That's another dollar. Right. And then you get fined when it is that you claim that you don't have money and we find out that you did have money. So now you have been fined $3. All right. That was a real... Uh, Two just, of those dollars totally in your control. Totally really. in your control. Really, yeah. all the dollars in your control if you could just read. Mm-hmm. Or so, if Roy could just write. I mean, one or the other. I mean, all right, I have four dollars now. Oh, <laughs> no, no, you're okay. No, you get grandfathered no, yeah, in. That was uh, uh, really falling dollars. under the yeah, same yeah, complaint. Yeah, you're, you're really getting every cent of that. <laughs> um, we're going to get to Guillermo's epic sound of the day in a second, and we also uh, we also have Ed Helms uh, joining us here, the guy from the Hangover movies. And finally, HBO has announced their critically acclaimed miniseries Big Little Lies will be returning for another season. The hope is most of the cast will return. Negotiations are underway. Experience why for nearly a century men have trusted Barbasol for a close, comfortable shave, whether it's extra moisturizing with vitamin E or soothing aloe. All you have to do is sit back and bask in the glory of your close shave. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with Barbasol. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. 
Um, as I said, Ed Helms, the hangover guy, is going to join us in 20 minutes, and a useless sound montage is coming up. Uh, still got something I forgot to mention, just uh, something that struck struck me. You remember how the Saints-Falcons game ended on Thursday night where Drew Brees is dropping back to pass, and he's throwing a pass he throws all the time to a tight window with the, the linebackers got his back to Drew Brees, so you just throw the ball and you allow your re- receiver to see it. Right. And so you throw into a real tight window. But in this particular case, Jones, the, the, the linebacker for Atlanta, made the play. And what I got to thinking about, made the interception, is do you remember how specifically he intercepted it? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, so you got a tight end. It's one of those passes, tight windows in, uh, in the seam to the tight end. Mm-hmm. Just He runs past the linebacker, and you just throw it at the linebacker's head. And you, right. you get the big tight end to see it. But he turned around and jumped up at the height of, a, of, of Drew Brees' accuracy, right? Mm-hmm. He jumped up in the air, and he caught the ball, and he was very high in the air. And one of the things that I found interesting that goes unnoticed in the moment, in the frenzy of the moment, is he caught the ball in a way that made it seem like that football was Roy's baby, the way Roy would catch his baby. Like, he caught the ball in a way that was maximum respecting the football. And the reason I realized it is because he was up in the air cradling the ball, and it was so important that he did nothing to brace his fall as he landed from a very high height right on his back. None of us would want to fall that way, but he did not want to let go of that football and that game. Right. So he was perfectly okay with doing something that if you and I right now did it in the television studio right there, I'd we, be br- might, we might not work for a week. Correct. I'd be bracing my fall <laughs> any way possible. Because of specifically yes. how high he jumped. But I just marveled at the way that those guys give their body to that cause. Like, he respected the football so much. Like, that guy could jump, and he was high in the air, and he held the ball with both arms, and he wanted to complete the catch, and so he just landed directly on his, on his back. Without bracing his fall in any way. Anyway, that was useless sound, and so is this. <laughs> it's football. You know, one, one team wins, one team loses, and right now we're not on the winning end of things. You know, proud of our guys. I mean, they played their guts out. This game's about momentum, and, and uh, you know, we had it for about four seconds. Could have whipped out my medicine bag and done quick shoulder surgery and fixed him up, but I wasn't able to do that. When the levee broke there at the end, you know, it's just a result of just, you know, bad vibes and energy. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, really never never played in this in my life uh, or played in the snow. Uh, and every time it snowed, I was in the house. They don't make cleats. You know, there's not a pair of cleats out there that's going to work in that better than any other ones and whatnot. I mean, you have these days or have these seasons or have these moments and, that's why I go back to the old adage, you know, tough times don't last, tough people do. You know, I don't know, you know about all that gas pedal stuff, but, um, you know, I think, you know, we've been trying that all season. I think it's just we did it a little bit better today. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't got eyes in the back of my head, okay? You either win or you learn, and we learned a lot today. What we're not going to do is we're not going to beat ourselves. He's beginning to get a little bit of drip. Well, you don't want consistent problems. That's the goal of coaching. You want to have no problems. You know, right now we've got problems in a lot of areas. That's sauce. Well, I mean, I was fortunate because it happened right in front of me. You know, there wasn't time to wait on anybody or anything. So, um, you know, it's just nice to see them get it right. Largely, it's it's a no-blink attitude of the group regardless of circumstance. Uh, everybody knows third down is money down. We haven't had in the last two years any real meaningful December games in terms of playoffs. They all mean something, but in different degrees. If we play well up front. Um, you're going to give yourself more than more than not a chance to win. As they call them, the hog mollies up front, man, they did their job. You know, with that, I, again, I, this is what happens to me. I'm not a real bright guy. So. Bud Light was, 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 was <laughs> on point today. You know, it's a game of inches. We're on the, it's a two-point play. We're on the two-yard line. And nobody can see any yard lines. <laughs> I couldn't tell where the ball was a whole day. <laughs> uh, I think he had one little boo-boo today on the screen. Just want to hit his feet. You can't throw it downfield. Uh, but that, he won't make that mistake again. You know, Alberto, shout out to Alberto. Yeah, I thought the adversity <laughs> revealed a lot of good things in our football team. And I do believe that unity strengthens. And I saw unity and, in, in, in essence, saw a stronger football team in oh, my mind. Shut up. I mean, momentum is momentum. You know, it's up and it's down. It's kind of like, you know, uh, when you get it, you try to keep it. He's one that if you ask my dad, as he liked number 20, he'd tell you that's a heck of a football player. And I think that's the best way to describe him. Because they all, they all matter. And forget records, they all, they all matter. And uh, 
it's just rips your guts out. You know, we just we just trying to get good, uh, you know, winning DNA. I don't know that the kick return game was an issue. The feeling of the ball was an issue. Uh, we'll get back in the lab and work on that. Uh, they played the butt shots. They played the heart shot. You know, every time we step out in the field, I see smiles. I see guys who are hungry to go make a play. You ever had a game, played in the game, coached the game in those kinds of conditions? Played in them when I was in college. You know, every weekend was like that in Laramie. Obviously, we got some things we need to work on, but we'll work on those things in our AFC North hats and T-shirts. <laughs> He's always going back to the lab, too. Yeah. The Sound of the Day is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Upgrade the shaving with a fresh blade whenever you want for a fraction of the price. Join dollarshaveclub.com today. I just love the idea of it. Tomlin's got all these great skill players, and he's just running into it with nobody blinks, nobody blinks, <laughs> chunk plays, popcorn, <laughs> splash, splash, and Belichick's going to beat him with Rex Burkhead. <laughs> like, Blades of grass. Here's <laughs> um, Burkhead in your face. And, and then here's a little Pagano for you because this is the most, uh, this is the happiest I've ever been. We're on the, it's a two point play. We're on the two yard line. And nobody can see any yard lines. I couldn't tell where the ball was a whole day. Just put it on his tombstone. <laughs> Not of his career. The actual tombstone. No, no, hold on a second. Somebody engrave this right now. I, I, Right now, these words, as this is the end of Chuck Pagano's career, and this is the symbol for, for all of it. We're on the, it's a two-point play. We're on the two-yard line. And nobody can see any yard lines. I couldn't tell where the ball was a whole day. How great is that? That's an NFL head coach. It's awesome. That happened Sunday. He was but, watching a football game. Like, go inside. If that, <laughs> but you want that on the tombstone right now because he's not dead yet. Well, you know what I mean. On the yes, okay. I, I shouldn't have said that. All right. Splash. Thank you for not pointing it out. Don Lebatard. I think when I was young, I actually called Chris Berman at ESPN. And left him a message. Dave Winfield fly rule. Stugatz. You wanted him to weave that. Yeah, I wanted him to. Yeah, because Dave Winfield was playing then, and I left him. I left him a message. You really did that. Mm -hmm. Because if I did that, oh, I know. Well, but Stugatz, you would do that now. I did it when I was (laughs) twelve. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Ed Helms from the Hangover movie is going to join us in ten minutes. We'll get to Mike's weird text with his father in a second. Oh yeah, that uh, that Carson Wentz injury. By the way, if he keeps running like that in the league, that's the reason that these guys all need to slide. All of them need to slide. I don't care what the circumstances are. Don't chase fumbles. Don't do anything. Don't chase interceptions. Slide. That is the reason you can't have that. And Stugatz is right when he says during the break, first call the Eagles need to make is to Romo. Yep. First call. Yep. This is the perfect situation. First off, he was diving in for a touchdown. Carson Wentz. You're saying yeah, don't even do no, that. No, but don't ever do that. Don't okay. do that. It's un- do not dive. At the goal line, because look, I mean, he got savaged. How many times have you been watching Carson Wentz over the last two seasons saying that kid's going to yes, get hurt? Yes, he's going to get right. hurt if he keeps playing like that. Uh, with Romo, it's interesting because there are so many fascinating elements to this. But this is kind of the scenario Romo's been been waiting for. He just thought it'd it's come perfect. in the form of the Cowboys. No, it's perfect. Good it's, offensive line. You get to stick it, it to Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. What? It's a six-game well, run to the Super Bowl. I stick it to the Cowboys. I think that, what might, that might be what keeps him from doing it. Really, is yes. the Cowboys? Yes, is you doing that to the do, Cowboys? Doing that, doing that on that team. But it's not like the Cowboys are are competing with the Eagles this no, year. No, but for he's anything. A, no, but he's a Cowboy. He's a Cowboy. Uh, let's talk to Chris Sims about that and other things. But you do have to make that call, right? And then yes. if Romo says no, then you yes. have to call Kaepernick. Well, you have a chance no, to win a Super Bowl. No, they might go Folds instead of Kaepernick. They might go Folds. Instead you have of a Kaepernick. chance at winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, Nick but Foles this, ain't this, is, win the, it for this you. is the perfect situation for Romo. It really is. It's pretty good for Kaepernick, too. Yes. Yeah. And Foles has been in that offense. He's been in that room, to quote Mike McCarthy. And he was even in that system, I believe, when he was over in Kansas City. He's familiar with it. Oh, but you could dump the next two. The reason it's perfect is you could be Philadelphia and dump the next two, just Romo figuring it out as he goes. Correct. Like yes. Just give him two games of preseason. Yep. Uh, Chris Sims with us now again. He said that Blake Bortles is the 70th best quarterback in the world. Blake Bortles is going to make him eat it by winning the Super Bowl while we're still doing these <laughs> rankings in January. So uh, Super Bowl MVP. That's right. Uh, Bleacher Report is where you check him out. Grateful that he uh, that he hangs out with us. So we got Blake Bortles at 70. We got Austin Davis at 69. 68 is T.J. Yates. He played yesterday. 
67 is Car- he's the starter now for Houston because Bill O'Brien doesn't know what he's doing. Number 67 is Cardale Jones. Number 66 is Brandon Whedon. Number 65 is C.J. Beathard. Are you, we- are you ready, Stugatz, for number 64, the 64th best quarterback in the world, according to Chris Sims? I am ready. All right, Chris, give it to us. It is Sean Mannion, backup quarterback, Los Angeles Rams. All right, I have no idea who that is. Who that is? Oregon State, right? Guillermo, put it on the poll. Do you know who that is? Congratulations, Sean. Also put on the poll, please, uh, put on the poll, does Mike Tomlin blink? (laughs) Uh, And what did you think of what we were saying there, Chris? What did you think? well, I, I heard a lot of what you're saying. First of all, even if they win the Super Bowl with Blake Bortles, which they have a chance to do because this defense is one of the greatest defenses I've ever seen, he'll still be at 70 when that's all said and done. But after that, what you're talking about with the Carson Wentz issue, I mean, I, 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 listen, I think they stay with Nick Foles. I understand the thought of Tony Romo and calling them, uh, but I still think it, you know you guys made some good points. That Nick Foles has been there. He understands the system. This is still a really good football team. It actually reminds me of a scenario my dad was involved in in 1990. They were 12-2. and two. My dad broke his foot against the Buffalo Bills, and the New York Giants had to change the way they played. They went to ground and pound with Jeff Hosteller, kind of got it together, played run the ball with Otis Anderson in defense, and ended up upsetting the Bills in Super Bowl 25 to win that. So it, it reminds me of that. Kaepernick's uh, not happening, guys. Right. Well, speaking of your dad, your dad would love if the Eagles called Romo, no? Oh, he could go in there. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Chris, uh, 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 Chris, he could go <laughs> rushing in and, like, he's getting ready. He's not, like, he can go up in there and do the rest of the season with Nance. No, thanks. No, we'll pass on that. <laughs> wow. I'm playing, I'm playing dad's agent right now. We'll pass. Sorry. <laughs> Chris, what the hell happened with Nance, man? Like, what happened? Like, you guys hate Nance. What, what did he do? I don't know what he did. I don't know. I'm just having fun with it. I mean, hey, listen, like you, like you asked me the first time I was on the show, do I think he signed off it? Certain, signed off on it? Certainly. Yes, I do. Uh, but whatever. My dad, I think having a more enjoyable life now, doing the CBS halftime pregame, he gets to keep track of the whole league entirely a little bit better and doesn't have to travel and do all that stuff. It's better. I'm glad he's home more. All right. We'll get number nice. 63 from you tomorrow. Thank you. We appreciate your help, sir. All right. Be good, guys. See you, Chris. Um, it's not a ridiculous idea on Romo. Like that's it's just it's, it's just tailor made for him. That offensive line is so good. Yep, and um, he's better than Foles. Tony Gamma, put it on the poll. Is Tony Romo's <laughs> falling out of the sky in one of those squirrel suits today better than Nick Foles? <laughs> it's all the elements about last year's team. I remember you saying, "Imagine Romo behind this offensive line with this running game." Same, basically, really good offensive lines are the same. Running game, they have three running backs. They have good wide receivers. The defense is good. They have a chance of winning a Super Bowl. Uh, we've got Ed Helms coming up next. Um, i got to get to that Leonard Fournette sound. I forgot to play it for Chris Sims. Leonard Fournette, oh. uh, we've got sound, exclusive sound of Leonard Fournette clearly in the concussion protocol, like clearly just dinged up. Uh, and the proof, like we've never aired anything like this before on ESPN where we have the proof that someone is failing the concussion protocol. Like I told y'all, man, Blink's coming around, man. Uh, to me, he's one of the top five quarterbacks. You know, last uh, last year, they, they didn't have a running game. And now we have a running game, and uh, I think he's showing his two colors. <laughs> top five <laughs> running back, Blake Bortles. Or top five quarterback, Blake Bortles. Good save. Almost a fine there. Yep, last year he said Blake Bortles was a top five top five quarterback. So what he's doing there is essentially Leonard Fournette is giving himself credit for Blake Bortles' right. success. He's a, he's a top five quarterback because I'm here. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, Ed Helms next. Don Libertard. Mike, how'd you feel that went? Was that okay for you? No, what do you think about it? Huh? What do you think? Well, Don't you our, think our, you're being smart a little bit no, about it? What no, do you think no, I went? No, no, no. Oh, not be, no, no, not being smart. I would not, do, I would not do that to Mike Tyson. I'm not being smart. No, sir. I say it in the most respectful way well, possible. Well, you're the interviewer, so you tell me how it went, buddy. Stugatz. I'm sorry if I've upset you, Mike. Thank you for being on with me. No, that. you didn't upset me. Because if you upset me, you would have known about it. This is the Don Libertard show. With the Stugats on ESPN Radio. His new movie, Father Figures, opens nationwide December 22nd. Ed Helms with us on ESPN Radio. Uh, he was with The Daily Show. I think it's in the glory days of The Daily Show. I don't know what he thinks is the glory days of The Daily Show, but let's ask him. Thank you, Ed, for being on the show with I'm us. I'm guessing he thinks the glory days are when he was a part yeah, of it. When, when, yeah. when would you look at The at the Daily Show and say that was, and thank you for being on with us, What that was the best time 
to be there. That uh, that's probably the most fun I had that one year. Well, thanks for having me, guys. It's great to be here. Uh, it's a very simple answer. the The glory days of the Daily Show started the day that I started, and they ended the day that I left. <laughs> right? Okay. I think we can all agree. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, yes, 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 that is exactly right. I was <laughs> laughing the other day seeing you talk to Colbert. That's a funny argument. You guys had a raging dispute one time. Stugatz, you t- well, here, Ed, you tell the people instead of me telling the people. Yeah, we had an ongoing debate. because Our, our offices were next to each other in the bathroom down the hall, uh, was there were it was a single occupancy bathroom. There's no latch that could indicate it if it was occupied. So I I always felt like you should just jiggle the handle and if it's locked, then you walk away and come back later. But Stephen was adamant that uh, you don't jiggle, you knock and you wait for a response, and that that's the polite and proper thing to do. But to me, like why? Why do you need to get put on the spot while you're doing your business? You should be left alone. Just check the handle. Walk away. Oh, so you don't want to speak when in that vulnerable condition and share that intimacy with anyone else. Exactly. And I also don't want to reveal my identity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there's a pooper. There's Pooper Ed Helms. What a stinker that guy is. (laughs) As soon as you say, just a minute. (laughs) then they know that, that it's you that's in there. And that's, you know, that, that, why not just let it be anonymous? Uh, let's go ahead and put that on the poll at Levitard Show. Single occupancy, <laughs> occupancy bathroom. Uh, jiggle knob or knock? Which is it? We'll have a poll answer for you by the end of the at, at, by the end of the show. Ed, you're always asking that Colbert question, Stu Gods, about Colbert. Here, ask a friend of Colbert. Yeah, well, Ed. So we've kicked this around in the show a little bit. Do you think Colbert? Because when he first started, when he replaced Letterman, the ratings were down a bit, and uh, so we're wondering, or I'm wondering at least, do you think he would exchange his ratings that he has now, in large part because of what he's doing with Donald Trump? to not have Trump be the president of the United States, meaning exchange his ratings for Hillary Clinton to be in office? Wow, that's that's a that's actually a brilliant question. Thank you. But uh, I actually, you know, no, you know, knowing that uh, I think I would have to say that Stephen would probably want what's best for the country ahead of what's best for his ratings. Um, because I, I think that he's a, a man of integrity that way. Now, what's best for the country is obviously a matter of opinion, and uh, and that's certainly uh, you are really you know, careful around this subject. Mistake. That's funny to you hear somebody from tip-toeing. Hollywood being careful around the politics as opposed to blowing it in our face. Um, <laughs> he was really careful, <laughs> he was, right? He was really well, he's careful. Also, he's also be, he's answering on behalf of Stephen right, Colbert, right, so he has to right, be careful. Right. That, I don't which, want to speak right. for somebody else. I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't want to implicate somebody else, but um, right. But then, but, no, I, I but, but your answer was pretty I, useless I, after that. I think Stephen loves loves America. What do you what do you what do you <laughs> want? <laughs> we all do, right? Yeah, we all do. You would take the ratings, though, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> of course, I would. <laughs> <laughs> His new movie, Father Figures, opens nationwide December twenty second. What did the acting struggle look like for you? Like, what are the details of you roughing it? Uh, is it is it anything like the uh, the HBO show? Is it crashing? Oh, that that's really funny. It's a lot like that show. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I I know a lot of people in that show uh, from my days grinding it out in stand up comedy clubs in New York City, and uh, I just did Pete Holmes' podcast, and we talked about it. Uh, th- that show better than just about anything out there. I think c- captures my my experience. Well, what's the sure. sh- what's the shameful stuff that you had to do, or what's the wh- what are the venues where you were playing doing stand up, and you're like, man, this is sad. Well, you'll you'll never know the depths that I went uh, to get stage time. I will never talk about that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> those days. <laughs> but no, I, th- there were so many shows. I mean, you, you, you just. Uh, you just want stage time when you're starting out. It's just so important to get stage time and performance time, like a pilot trying to get, you know, hours in the air. And, uh, and so you just, you wind up doing these really dingy shows in the basements of bars and, uh, and 
just playing to audiences that are just incredibly resentful that you're even there because maybe you're talking over a football game <laughs> or um, – Oh. And then a lot of times you have to you have to stand on the corner and hand out flyers, which they call barking, like a carnival barker, just to try to round up audience members. And uh, there's not a lot of dignity in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. There is no dignity in what it is that you're talking about. But hey, man, look, you got the success. New movie, Father Figures, opens nationwide December 22nd. Ed Helms with us. You know him probably. Do you do you get a lot of people just shouting, hey, it's the hangover guy, like as opposed to knowing you by name? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The hangover, and then it, it's funny. There's There are office fans and hangover fans, and they all they come at me with real different energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would that but would. It's all it's all good. It's all good energy. Uh, do you have a uh, either firsthand or secondhand story? The best Tyson story you've got from filming with him. Like, was he was he always kind? Did he ever lose his temper? No, he was really actually great. Um, every time we worked with him, uh, you know, the second movie. When I got his tattoo, uh, <laughs> it wasn't clear to me that anyone had told him that that that, that joke was in the movie. So <laughs> suddenly, and and you know, and then he he came to Thailand to shoot that wedding scene with us because he's he's in the very last scene of Hangover Two, and I have I have his tattoo, and I actually. I actually got really nervous the night before because I because I, I just started wondering did anybody tell Mike that I got his tattoo as a joke <laughs> is he going to be pissed at me right and uh, and thankfully I saw him the next day and he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen so um, we had a great experience with him that could have been that could have turned out very differently yeah it could have I had no guarantee that 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 was going to go well. But thank God it did. Ed, am I reading here correctly that you cry at sappy television commercials? I heard that. I heard that about you. Oh, my God. Where did you hear that? Okay, so it's not true. Well, I'm just reading it. Oh, the well, inter- maybe it is true. I will neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. When's the last time? I want to know. The last time Ed When's the, sa- the last time Ed has cried Good. at a time that's not inappropriate? That's not appropriate. Um... No, yeah, that, that that's that's not appropriate. Like I, you know, I I cried during Ratatouille for some reason. I it snuck up on me. I'm sorry about that. I still feel remorse. It just snuck up on me. I don't know. It was a tough time in my life. Um, it's gonna be okay, buddy. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, Ed. Rat- thank you. I appreciate your soothing. Ratatouille can get us through some. Tough thank you. Time. Thank right, you, Ed. Right. Thank you for soothing. Do you me. have one? Like, there's no. Let's tough. leave him alone. He doesn't want to answer the question. He doesn't. Huh? No. That's right. it. Right. Uh, thank you for holding me to, to your bosom. I think a Folgers commercial. Every time I hear that, the best part of winning. <laughs> Folgers in you. That that always brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> really? That's beautiful. Uh, good luck with the movie again. Father Figures opens nationwide December twenty second. Do we want? To give him the results of the uh, the bathroom poll real quick. Sure. All right. Let me yeah. Know. Oh yeah. All okay. right. Let's find out here at Lebitard Show on Twitter. Uh, tell him how many votes we have. It's a worldwide internet national show. Um, what do you have there, Stugat? In a single occupancy bathroom, should you jiggle the doorknob or knock when the door is locked? Three hundred ninety votes. Lots of votes so far. <laughs> Never happened before. No. No. Fifty. No. no. Whoa. Ed Helms. You're part Ed, of history. Ed Helms. 50-50 on the pole, jiggling or knocking on a bathroom on a single, a single occupancy. My God, America is divided. Yes, <laughs> yes it's so yes. divided yes. everywhere you look. Uh, while we're at it, uh, standing wiper or sitter? Oh, my God. Uh, that's a pass. <laughs> Yes. I'd just rather not conjure <laughs> that image for anybody. <laughs> well, the reason we ask the question is very often that standers don't know that sitters exist, and sitters don't know that standers exist. And so I was hoping to surprise you. I was surpri- I was hoping to oh, surprise you. Funny. Okay. But you no commented your way out of this. You were a real coward in this interview. You passed. You no commented on that. Thank you, Ed. We appreciate your time. It was nothing, Helms. <laughs> <laughs> 
scratch and claw for every little drop of dignity that I have left. <laughs> we had to Thank bribe you. Folgers. You out realize of you. that people now have both images. Instead of no images, they've now got both of them because you've left that with them. <laughs> <laughs> you sit and it's insufficient, and then you stand. Everyone knows it now. <laughs> so much. I ain't got time to bleed. Hates us. Hates us. Hates, hates us. us so much, and we deserve it. <laughs> hates us. To everyone listening, 1 800 Flowers is where you need to be if you need anything. Because <laughs> you screwed something up at home. 1-800-Flowers is where you go. Allison is dealing with him right now. And she's probably getting yelled at. Funniest thing from the sports weekend and, and, and poll results next. Oh, man. Right now when you order 12 peppermint roses for just twenty nine ninety nine, one 800 flowers will give you an extra half dozen roses and a vase absolutely free. That's up to 40% off the original price. Peppermint roses are the perfect <laughs> holiday surprise for these special people on your list. This beautiful bouquet in a rush of holiday white and red roses will leave your loved ones stunned without spending a fortune. It's the best of both worlds. Amazing roses at an unbeatable price. <laughs> Why did we just attack poor Ed Helms? I don't know. <laughs> I've been thinking about it the entire time. What did time he I'm do reading. to us? Why did we just attack him with a barrage of questions? We attacked him. <laughs> And I insulted him by telling him. Yes. He gave us nothing. Yeah, I think that's where we lost him, right there. <laughs> you can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPNU.